Bunkers. Y'all doing all right? Good to see you. Listen, you all, today we are talking about uh, finance and spirituality. We're going to put them two together as it pertains to paying yourself first because you really shouldn't separate them. You shouldn't, you shouldn't separate them. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to a talking point. I don't really have any notes for you, but today I want to go into the talking points to kind of encourage you to uh, pay yourself first um, because you have been, almost everything you've been taught was wrong. See in 60. It's the show that will get you thinking And where the topics are hot Feel free to comment Whether we agree or not Cause he's got something to say Sir Walter Jones Sir Walter Jones Seven days a week, always on time, but this time is not free. So Walter Jones, always on sleep. Latest trending topics had you jumping out your seat. He's got something to say. Come on in. The water's fine. Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter Jones Show. I'm he. It is the evening edition. Baby. <laughs> hey, always come on in. The water is fine. The water is deliciously fine. Listen, you ought to pay yourself first. It is imperative that you understand the concept. Mm. I don't understand how is it that we have lived in this uh, African-American communities all these years and just didn't know some things. I do understand because it wasn't passed down to some of us. Others of us, it was passed down, but we didn't pay much attention. At the time of this recording is 2024. It is uh, Black History Month. And you're going to be hearing about a whole lot of black folks that we hear about every February. And then come March, we don't hear about them much anymore, should we? Today I put up a post on Patreon about uh, Country Wayne. Roland Roland Martin did a commentary on the Shea Shea interview of Country Wayne. Country Wang did not go viral like Cat Williams or Monique. Why? Because he was not exposing somebody's dirt and Oprah's name didn't come up or Tyler Perry's name didn't come up or no scandal. Basically, he talked about finances and how he made his money, how he did it why he did it and how he's pulling in, pulling up others who are helping him. He's helping them at the time of this recording is 2024 February African American week. Cause it feels like a week. It's going to be, it's going to be gone like that. This is a vote, a voting year for those of you who understand this year, two old men are running again. It is a rematch of Biden and Trump. And uh, uh, one of them are going to get it. Maybe. Strong maybe. That one of them going to get it. And uh, um, uh, it's going to shock quite a few of you all what's going to happen in November. <clears throat> but I want to say this, though, as to not to alienate the millions of voters on both sides. I said that I would not speak ill will publicly about Donald Trump and waste a whole lot of time about that or, or, or Biden would be, the, I mean, because they both are two peas in the pod. They, in some areas, they're twins. <laughs> it's not about those men. It's about you, the voter. You're the ones. Whatever's happening to us in America, you're the fault. Of the people, by the people, for the people. You're the fault. You see, these men and women in Congress uh, in the three branches of the government are there as a representation of who you. They represent you, their constituents. Whoever there was put in there by you. 
you're probably saying, I didn't put the president in there. I, I know I voted, but it is the, the, the electoral college that put him in there. Yes. And guess, guess how the electoral college got those students in that college. You did that. You did it. So everything that happens in America, politically, you did it. You can't just press a button and say, I didn't do it. You did it. So when we spend a lot of time going to a herd mentality, blaming two men or whoever's in that office for something that might have come down the wire. Blame yourself or blame your partner in crime or somebody who may not look like you, but they're citizens like you. So let's talk about the church. Church hurt and dysfunctions and manipulation and witchcraft and Jezebelian spirits, so-called. All that stuff's happening in the church. Whose fault is that? Hmm. Hmm. Because you know you are the church, right? And when you're silent and we're not saying anything about these things, you part problem. Whites are, are part of the problem when they know they got a racist next door neighbor who is wreaking havoc on a black family's life. And they're not saying anything about it. They, the silence is deadly. The black man is, is guilty as well because he know that little Pookie uh, carjacked the neighbor up the street. And you know he did it, but you're afraid to say anything based off of retaliation. You both are in the same boat. You see, it's your fault. Everything that happens in America is your fault, whether it's directly or indirectly. So now you've got to find out what do I do as an individual to get myself out of these problems that's happening? You see, because you joined the herd mentality, you can't pull it back. It's the system is already in place. We have trillions of dollars deficit and the crime is horrible. And we are we are number one in America for almost everything uh, catastrophic, yes. But you're going to have to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. So the world, the political world, the medical world, uh, the legal world, the educational world, the Christian world, all those that world right there, you know you live in the world, but you're not of it. But what are you going to do about your house? You see, this is the whole point of this show today. It's about your house. What are you doing to prepare your house for what is coming in 2024? 2025, what have you done? Can you look back on what you have been doing the past 10 years and say, I'm ready for whatever comes? Some of you are saying, well, spiritually, I'm ready. Now the Lord take me away. Fine. That's good that you're ready. Going to get your crown, boo-boo. But what about naturally? What about physically? Hmm? Hmm. What about financially? Hmm. How long are you going to waste your money on nonsense? Hmm. Pay yourself first. See, this is both a natural and spiritual message because let's talk about the natural first, which is first scripture says, then it's spirit. This is this is a dispensational. That scripture is dispensational, not so much. Anyway, that's a Patreon show right there. How are you paying yourself first? Thank you, Joanne uh, West Point. Thank you for that. Number one, I can put both spiritual and natural together. When you get your paycheck, <laughs> the first thing you were taught is to pay God first. Were you not? Yes, you were. Can I say some shocking things on the show since I own the show? And can't nobody, you know, can't nobody uh, fire me from the Sir Walter Jones show? Hmm? Can I say some shocking things here? In some cases, for some of you who attend a brick and mortar church building, you are building up somebody else's coffers. When you give to your church, what do I mean by that? In some cases, some of your churches, you are building up somebody else's empire. It may be your pastor. 
the first family, that's typically who it goes to. You are building up somebody else's empire. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I say pay yourself first, it is amazing how everybody else in your life get theirs first but you. Because when you get your, your paycheck, Uncle Sam, get his before you see it. Am I right? Most of you, unless you work through your under the table cash only or you're a 1099 person, most of you, the government get theirs first before you see it. And when you do see it, you see it says Uncle Sam's face on your check. He said, I got mine first. Guess who else going to get theirs first? Then you're going to deposit that check in the bank. And then you're going to write uh, bills on that check. You, you probably don't pull out your checkbook. We, don't, we hardly write checks anymore. But your credit card company going to get theirs first. The light company going to get theirs first. The gas company going to get theirs first. The car company going to get theirs first. The insurance company going to get theirs first. And uh, Netflix and Hulu and Disney and Prime and Paramount and HBO Max and Tubi. <laughs> they all going to get theirs first. And when you get through paying all your bills, then you're going to think about doing something for yourself if you can't afford it. Whose fault is that? Yours. It's yours. Especially when you're up in age in your 50s and 60s. It's really your fault. How long is somebody going to keep babysitting you to tell you you got to pay yourself first? When I was at my church a few years ago, this is 2019, they asked me to teach a class. And so I was teaching a class, a full house, and I was talking about paying yourself first. And one of the sisters got up and said, yeah, but you got to pay your tithes first. And I said, ugh. Bishop Moody was there sitting there, Bishop, Mother Moody and the elders were sitting there. And I wanted to so bad correct her. But I couldn't. I just couldn't because I'm not the guy that goes to churches to divide the house. I divide only on the Sir Walter Jones show. <laughs> I don't divide, divide in churches. I just don't do it. But I wanted to tell her so bad, so bad. That's the problem. You paying a tithe first, but you should be tithing to yourself first. Because how is God getting that money? If y'all keep saying God got it, God got to get his money first. How is he getting the money? Follow the money trail. For a person who say God gets his money, they're saying that God is only in that church house. You have to listen to what they're saying because they don't even know what they're saying. So you listen to what they're saying. They're saying that God can only be paid when you put your 10% in that house. Do you understand the words that came out of my mouth? Even though most of them don't even realize that tithing is 23% over time, they can't go that deep into the text. Blessing to you, Corey. All right. So they're saying God get his money first. God gets his money from me when I pay myself first. <laughs> Number two, God gets his money from me when I pay my bills on time. What do I mean by that? Oh, no man is what I heard the church say. They quoted that, right? So what do they usually mean when they say that, though? <laughs> 
So you're telling me to own no man, but yet, why aren't you telling me to pay my bills at home? Come closer. Have you noticed the, the rhetoric on tithes and offering teaching? They never tell you all, they never focus on you all paying your bills on time at home. They only focus, as a matter of fact, they tell you all, don't pay your bills. Pay God first through tithe. So they're telling you, they're telling you to disobey God by paying him first, by not paying him at home, <laughs> which is you're owing man money. Man gave you lights and gas, and you agreed to pay them back on time. Am I right? You agreed to pay them back on time. When you don't do that, you're not giving God his money. <laughs> what do I mean by that, y'all? What do I mean by that? You are not good stewards of your money and you are a liar because you, you agree that you would do this if they hook up some lights in my house. And God was right there when you agreed with Atlanta Edison, Dallas Edison, New York Lights and Coke. <laughs> uh, what what can y'all drop your the name of your 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 light company company? My ours is Common Com Ed. Or it used to be called Commonwealth Edison. Now it's Com Ed. Our gas is people's gas or night core if you're in the suburbs. Pay your responsibility. It is your responsibility to pay the man his money. Uh, let's see. Eversource, where is that? Where's Eversource, you all? XL Energy. I've, seen, I've heard of X, XL is uh, owned by uh, own us, Brother Troy. I believe XL own us. Come in. At least I've seen them on, them on the bill. I've Duke El, Duke 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 Ellington, <laughs> Duke Energy, uh, Reliant Energy. Where's that, y'all? I, I meant to tell y'all, put your city there too. Swepco, Sophia. What are that? Georgia Power, Con Edison, PP and L. Where's that? Nipsco. Wow. National Grid. What? Where is that? Uh, Columbia Power and Light, DTE, formerly Detroit Edison, Alabama Power Company. Wow. Ohio Edison. Who else? U UGI, B, G, and E. Look at the boy. We got folks from all over. The Petco. Is it Pico or Petco in Philly? Oh, you know, that was Massachusetts. Okay. Dominion Power for Virginia. Wow. Center point. Monkey moves. Where's, where's that? Nipsco, Indiana. No, wow. I forgot about them. The Illuminating Company. Really? <laughs> it's, it sounds so generic to us. Uh, uh, Pep. Oh, Washington, D.C. is Pepco. PWC, Fayetteville, Cleveland, Public Power, man, Florida Power and Light, Tux Electric in Dallas. Uh, ain't y'all the one that had that problem a couple years ago? Where <laughs> somebody hacked y'all. Y'all 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 need y'all need to put another y'all need to get your security guard. Uh, Barney Fife is, is on uh, he, he he for he for hire. Encore Energy, Fort Worth. Constellation, Texas. That is amazing. Wow. In enter enter G. Enter <laughs> enter G Y. Look at that, y'all. Madison Gas and Electric. You supposed to be paying your bill first.
first. And I get it. You may not be able to afford to pay it in January, so you typically the average person is one month behind. Ask me how I know. Oh, now I'm not one. I'm not one month. I'm not not anymore. I stopped playing them games. I stopped playing them. I stopped playing games. I stopped playing games. When I get the bill, I pay it all. I just don't want. I just want to. Oh, I don't want. Oh, I'm 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 so, I'm sick of playing them them them, them games. So. I pay it all. Just get it out. Just get it out of the way. And the only reason why I pay it all, because if I need them, I have them. Come close. Come close. The reason why you pay your bills on time is because you got time. You got bargaining, persuasive bargaining power. It helps you when you need them to help you. You see, when people have abused the system and then they go to the system for help, the system will say, we've given you help already and you didn't pay it on time. Ask me how I know. When I was living in mental poverty, I would play around with this thing in Chicago called the uh, what is it when they got rid of the, they got rid of the, um, corporal punishment and the electric chair and all that stuff. They, they ceased it. They stopped it and they put the, it's called a moratorium. There it is. Illinois has a energy moratorium, which means from end of November, I think, until about March, they cannot turn off your your utilities. That's your lights, your gas, uh, and your um, and your water. They can't do it by law. They can't. So what do poor-minded people do? Even though they got the money to pay it, poor-minded people stop paying their utilities. Ask me how I know. Oh, they stop paying their utilities and then they wait till March to start paying so they can use that money somewhere, somewhere else. But guess what's, what happens during that moratorium, at the end of that moratorium? What people do is, what people realize is that their bills are now in the thousands. It's in the thousands. And then what do they do? They pick up the phone. And they call the utility company and say, can I, can I, can I? A lot of them can get on some kind of payment plan, but the payment plan is so high. Because the bill is so high. Then number two, that some utility companies will say, we can only give you four months or maybe six months. That's as high as we go. So the, the lower, the less months we give you, the higher your bill is going to be. And here's another thing. You not only have to pay the payment plan, the minimum, you also have to pay the current bill. I don't think y'all understand how this works. <laughs> pay his, he had to choose between paying his bills, his power bill, or buying food. I don't think y'all understand how this works. I know how this works because I was a very poor-minded person. You make a payment arrangement. The bill come to the house for, uh, it's a $1,000 bill. You told them you were going to pay $100 a month. Well, no problem. You can afford that, right? But guess what? You have to pay them $100 a month. Depend That's just your arrangement on top of whatever the new bill is for that month. So what you think is going to be $100 a month, that you can budget? No, it may be $150 a month. And so the poor mind be like, wait a minute, you came and shut my lights off. Ask me how I know. They did, they did that to me. They, they, came, they shut it off. And I was like, well, I made an arrangement. They said, sir, you was only paying us uh, the arrangement amount. 
but you still had to pay the bill on time. Did you not read or hear what the operator told you? And I'm like, she was talking so fast. And she said, it's not our fault that she was talking so fast that you didn't understand. You could have asked questions. Okay. Can you turn it back on? Yes. We can turn your bill, your light bill, uh, your, your light back on. We absolutely can. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can y'all tell me what was the next answer? <laughs> Megan, <laughs> Megan Ephraim said, how do you know? <laughs> yes, you sure can. There it is, Sarah. You have to pay the full amount. What's the full amount? $3,000. Why? Because November, December, January, February, March, maybe April, you decided that she wasn't going to pay us. It added up. It, it just climbed up. Now the bill is $3,000. The payment arrangement is $100 plus the bill. If it gets shut off again, or if it gets shut off, period, you got to pay us $3,000. Ask me how I know I played that game almost every year when I was a young man. <laughs> I played that game. Not no more. So you got to learn now to pay yourself first. So here's what you need to do. Tom tomorrow I'm going to do a, uh, a Patreon teaching on paying yourself first. I'm going to go into details. There's already a... A, um, we already went up, we put something on Patreon today in the finance room and we're talking about, you all already saw it, um, the finance room, the country Wayne effect. Okay. Country rain will teach you a lesson. You could either go to Roland Martin to watch it, or you can hear my introduction to it. Okay. That's in there right now. I'm getting ready to drop another teaching as soon as this class is over. Tomorrow, I'm going to go into details about paying yourself. All right. So listen, you all, it's a lot going on with Patreon. If you're not over, if you ain't signed up yet, uh, then that's your fault. <laughs> now, the credit card companies get their money and they're charging you 29%, some of them. 29%. Yo, that's a lot of, that's a, that's ridiculous. And they're banking on you not paying it, but pay the minimum. They get their money, whether you don't pay it or whether you pay it, they're going to get theirs. That's ridiculous. Everybody get their money first, but you and you are the one working. That's slave mentality. That's slave mentality. So let me go into this here. Pay yourself first is an investor mentality and phrase popular in personal finance and retirement planning literature that means automatically routing a specific savings contribution from each paycheck at the time it is received. As soon as you get it, grab your money, boo-boo, get your money out of there, grab it as quick as you can. Because the savings contributions are automatically routed from each paycheck to your savings or investment account. Act like you are a bill collector. Act like you are Uncle, Uncle Sam. All right? You got to be your own bill collector and pay yourself first. I do it every time. I don't care who give me what. I pull between 10 and 20% out of that. That's mine. You are paying yourself first. In other words, paying yourself before you begin paying your monthly living expenses and making discretionary purchases. Pay yourself first. It's a personal finance strategy of increased and consistent saving and investment while also promoting frugality. The goal is to make sure that enough income is first saved or invested before monthly expenses or discretionary purchases are made. You understand? Data from the Federal Reserve shows that most Americans do not have enough money saved, either for retirement or for near-term uh, emergency. You just don't have it. 
Many personal finance professionals and retirement plannings tout the pay yourself first plan as a very effective way to ensure you continue making your chosen savings contributions. How often? Month after month after month. Never stop. Never stop paying yourself. You should have been doing it from the first time you got your your first job when you might have been 14. This suggestion hinges on the fact that it removes the temptation to skip a contribution and spends uh, and spend the funds on expensive of expenses that is other than savings. Regular savings contributions can go a long way towards building a long-term nest egg. And some financial professionals even go as far as to call the pay yourself first, the golden rule of personal finance. If you are using the pay yourself first method of personal finance, you may opt to put your money in a range of saving vehicles, depending on your financial objectives. The phrase can refer to earmarking a certain percentage of your paycheck to be contributed to your retirement accounts, such as your 401k or to your IRA or your Roth IRA. Alternatively, you may put the funds in a cash savings account. You can you can put it in a certificate of deposit. Pay yourself first. Simply involves building up a retirement account. I don't care where you put your where you, that which account you put it in. You got to do it. Creating an emergency fund or savings for a long term goals. You got to do it. Do Americans use pay yourself first as a financial strategy? Research on savings indicates that a relatively small percentage of Americans pay themselves first. In fact, the federal reserve reports that in 2019, the most recent figures available, less than 40% of Americans could not cover a $400 emergency in cash. Ask me how I know. Mm -hmm. The advantage of pay yourself first out of your out of your paycheck is that you build up a nest egg to secure your future and create a cushion or finance uh, financial emergencies such as your your car breaking down or medical expenses. We're older bunkers. We're older. You're going to have a medical expense and uh, your medic your Medicaid, Medicaid, Obamacare, whatever. It may not take care of all of it. It may not take care of all of it. Without savings, many people report experiences a large, large amount of stress. However, many people claim that they simply do not earn enough money to save and fear that if they start saving, they may not have enough money to cover their bills. I'll talk about that tomorrow on the Patreon. I'll talk about it tomorrow. You can downsize. Why do you need so much stuff? Huh? Hmm. When I bought my car, they tried to push uh, uh, an extended warranty on me. And then they tried to push gap insurance on me. And I said, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm not buying no more products from this place. Just give me the car. It says, sir, just this, this may happen. This may happen. This may. And I said, sir, you're making more money on each one of us that come up in here than, than, than us buying your car. You're not making much money on the car that I just bought. I am financing this car for $18,000. By the time I get through paying it off, depending on what you're getting ready to give me based off of my FICA score, the worst case scenario would be I'm going to be paying $31,000 for an $18,000 car, which really ain't worth $18,000. This car out here on that lot is probably worth about twelve. dollars but you upped it up so that you can make some money. But you got to see, you ain't making much money on it. So the money that you're making is from you selling me an extended warranty. Are y'all understanding how this works? So I always turn it down because the ex the company that offers the extended warranty make deals with the car companies and say, listen, we will give you four hundred dollars per contract if you if you take it and then you can up the price, whatever you want to. And that's why some of these contracts cost you thousand, two thousand dollars and up for an extended warranty or something like that. When the car company only paid four hundred dollars for it. 
So they get a whole bunch of them. They get a whole bunch of them, and they just sit there on the desk. And every time they sell one, the company gives the car company four hundred dollars. But you just gave them two grand <laughs> for the car that, if it break down, you have put money away to fix it. So I don't I don't do the gap insurance, and nor do I do the extended warranty because what I did when I bought the car is. Every time I got paid, I put my money away. I took 10 and 20 percent out of my check and I put it towards car expense. I still got the envelope sitting over here. I can't reach. I can't reach it. There's an envelope that says car expense. And I would take I would get my paycheck and take 20, 10 and 20 percent out of that check and put it in that envelope. I'm trying to tell you, and I did that every check, every check, every check, every check. And I had a, I had a five-year car note, and that, that car is paid off, thank God, finally. But I put that money away. And every time something broke on it, I went into that envelope. Y'all better, better hear me paying your child's medical insurance when they turn 26 and you're trying to save ask me <laughs> I know so when my when my tires were were bald and my brakes were bad and my bearings were gone and all kind of stuff instead of me relying on uh the car shield I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to do a car shield y'all go ahead and buy the car shield they bring in these these famous people uh, Ice Cube, Ice T, I, 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 Ice Vanilla, I, whatever his name is, and the other woman. All right, they they got these got they they got these black these black folks doing these car shield commercials because they know all these black folks is buying the car shield. And then when something break, you take it there to get it fixed, and they deny the claim. You know why they deny the claim? Because they know you can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been through these games. I've been through these games. You can't read. It said we, we repair everything on, in, uh, on the engine. We repair everything. Bumper to bumper. Everything in the engine we, we repair. That is a lie. Vivica J. Fox. Thank you, Danny. That is not true. Have some people benefited from it? Yes. They're going to always give you great testimonials like the tithing scam. You're going to hear great testimonials. <laughs> but let me tell you. How many people have been denied for something that they couldn't read? There's a little thing between the ignition and the engine. That little part right there, we don't cover it. We don't cover that little part. And that part is the problem uh, the, that's causing the engine to blah, blah, blah. We don't cover that. They won't, they'll tell you in the small print because they, legally they have to, but they know you can't read. And I can't tell you all how many uh, claims have been denied by Car Shield, Vivica J. Fox. You understand? So when I needed everything up under my car, what did I do? I went into my envelope. And I took, I went down there to the car eggs. Don't worry, call the car eggs, man. And I said, they, I said, I need tires. He said, now here are our selection of tires. Now uh, this tire cost, uh, you could have $50 uh, 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 per tire for this one here. And uh, this, this, this tire here is $80. And this tire here is, is $100 per tire. And, and then now we're getting really expensive here. So I said, give me the expensive one. <laughs> he, uh, he said, you sure now? Yeah, don't be questioning me. He said, this, I don't, I don't believe in getting all this, this cheap stuff so I can come back here five, three more months from now. I got to come back here because you give me the cheap stuff. No, my daddy taught me better than that. I want your best. And just because it costs more to I mean it's the best. So I want to I I look at the specifics and I want to go on Google. I went on Google. I went on YouTube. And I found out that that is the best tire. And so I wind up, I wind up spending over uh, over, it was a big, big, uh, my tire bill was huge, <laughs> huge. I didn't care. I reached in the envelope and said, how much is this tire? These tires, these four tires? No problem. I said, can you check the brakes? He said, oh, the brakes are bad. He said, I said, how much? He said, yeah, it's, it's going to cost you uh, about $600, $800 if you do this. I said, well, do that. And here it is. What else? Uh, your bearing is bad. I said, how much you gonna cost? He said, that's oh, that's oh, sir, so that's gonna be another eight hundred dollars. Okay, do that. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Anything else I'm gonna hear? Anything else? Do I do I need a paint job? Hmm? Whatever, whatever. I need you to fix this. Because I paid all this money for this. I didn't pay eighteen thousand for this car. After y'all ran my credit report and it wasn't that great, I wound up paying almost thirty thousand for this car. So if I got now I got a thirty thousand dollar car in my mind, even though it was only a twelve thousand dollar car, I'm gonna keep it going. I wanna restore it. Make it make it new because I'm not coming down to the car, uh, wherever the car maxes and all these other places and buy another car. After I put all that money. No, I'm not doing that. I got to start thinking like a like a, a man who is not rich, but he's wealthy. I put the money away. I did not spend that money on nothing else. No going out, taking your woman out. <laughs> taking the kids out, buying new suits. No, that was my car money that left that stayed in that envelope. And I had enough money in there to do whatever I need to do with that car to fix it up. Now that car, I've taken this car, that car all over America. Within the past year, I've been to South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, uh, let's see, Detroit. Uh, uh, where, where else did I go? Uh uh, Memphis, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Iowa. I drove to Pennsylvania. I drove to New York in that car. <laughs> After I got all that stuff under, because now I drive like it's new. I done been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. <laughs> Atlanta, thank you, Danny. I done been everywhere in that car. And I can drive it for another 100,000 miles. I've been to Mayberry. Come on, Sheila. <laughs> I've been to Mayberry. Y'all see me. Everywhere I go, I take the bunkers with me. Pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. And don't let the church manipulate you and take your money out of your house. Mm -hmm. Until the wheels fell off. That's what I'm going to do. Joyce, I'm telling you. I'm going to drive that sucker till the wheels come off. You see, because you African-Americans always want to look good. Come on, build four tough. Come on, Corey. You always want to look good. And you trying to look good for somebody who don't even know you. You trying to look good for somebody who could care less who you are. They don't even like you. You don't even like them. But you trying to drive around on something. Let me tell you something. Joyce, can you tell them to come close? Because they're not. They, they're not close enough. I don't understand why they don't want to come close. And they're not close enough. They're not close enough. This woman got up in church and testified about this Mercedes Benz that she had been, she was trying to negotiate uh, at the car lot. And she spent felt like 30 minutes testifying in church about how she negotiated the price of a Mercedes Benz. And then she walked out of there without putting no money down. And it's sitting in the parking lot right now. Saints come on. And the saints went up. Ah, bah, 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 bah. And I sat my little skinny self down. And I didn't make a noise. I didn't make a nothing. I ain't say dilly squat. I was so angry. I was so angry. I was so angry. Y'all know why I was angry? I was angry because you all, first of all, this chick done wasted 30 minutes of our worship time testifying about how much debt she just got herself into. <laughs> <laughs> You got a fool's deal, Joyce E. Sample. You got a fool's deal. <laughs> you want us to celebrate you getting into a five-year, maybe six-year debt, and your car note going to be $600 plus, and you didn't put no money down. And we excited? That's the black church. I've never seen white folks do that. 
just so you can drive up to the church parking lot in your brand new Mercedes so that we can admire your debt trap. You did not buy an asset. You bought a liability. As a matter of fact, when you drove off the lot, can y'all finish the statement? <laughs> I'm so sick of y'all poor uh, testimonies. Poor man's testimonies I hear all the time. When you're paying something on, t on time, the old, the old folks used to say on time, meaning you're paying, you're making payments to something that you, you don't own. Is that really a testimony? <laughs> huh, is that really a testimony? Now, the exception to that rule is I get it. You bought a house. You finally got good shelter. You got room in the house for your family to now to be raised in. Well, praise God for that. Yes, it's a 30-year mortgage, yes. But I want you to testify about how God gave you an idea on how to cut that 30-year mortgage down to 15. <laughs> you darling. I just don't understand that. You remember when, uh, what's the pastor? Reed called him Baby Jakes. What's his name? He bought his wife that 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 hundred thousand dollar car, and they rejoicing. Everybody getting all excited, and she she falling out and, and crying and all this stuff. And then just a few a few weeks later, they need to raise this almost the same amount to fix the roof <laughs> of the church. <laughs> Poor people brag on the stuff that they John Gray, yeah. Poor people constantly brag on the stuff they can't afford to have. Poor people brag on their clothes, their shoes, their cars, and their homes, and their lifestyle that they can't even afford to have. Poor people brag on their, their vacations and their exotic vacations at that. They couldn't even afford to take that trip because the people who are taking these exotic boat trips and ship, cruise ships, they don't even have any money and savings. Notice what I just read to y'all. The average American didn't have $400 of emergency money saved up. Didn't have it. Poor people have these birthdays and they go downtown and they rent out places or they, they have us go downtown where the parking is horrible and when you do park, it's, it's $20 an hour <laughs> and, the, and the food is too expensive. But because it's your birthday... You invite us to come down and spend all this money on your silly birthday, knowing that, well, you can't even afford to go down there because you're banking on somebody else to pay your bill because it's your birthday. Poor people do that stuff, man. Poor people do that stuff. Now, now, my, now we're sitting at the bill, and then the, the restaurant say, we, we, don't, we don't separate the bill. You got to put it on one bill. Now you're going to have fights. Always a fight. I only ordered a salad. <laughs> Why I got to pay $80? <laughs> Poor people mentality. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. Let me tell you, my family is frugal. My dad is frugal. We didn't play those games. When it came time for even Mother's Day and Father's Day, y'all going out there and renting, renting these places or going to these restaurants and standing, standing in long lines and, and then the bill come and everybody fighting over that. Why am I paying $100? Because the bill, the bill is six thousand dollars, <laughs> and you, so what? You ordered a salad. <laughs> he ordered a steak, and he think he only going to pay ten dollars. So what do we start doing? We do cookouts on Father's Day and Mother's Day. Before my mother died, we we did cookouts. We went off to each other's house, and we cooked, and we enjoyed each other's company, and we stayed where we want to as long as we wanted to, instead of somebody kicking us out because another table, another party got to come in. No, we ain't trying to impress you. We ain't trying to impress you, mom and dad. You know we love you. We know we're going to show you even how much more we love you, Well, we're going to go in that kitchen and cook for y'all. And they love that. They're like, we ain't got to go to no restaurant. We just want to be with our children. And we would cook for them and just have, 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 have all kind of games and what have you. But poor mentality are the ones who are trying to, trying to keep up with the Benjamins. You ain't got no Benjamins to keep up with. Are y'all mad at me? Huh? Huh? Y'all mad? Good. So I'm trying to tell y'all. <laughs> 
Yes, sir, Bernie. Yes, it is. That's good. That's good. All right? So when it comes to paying yourself first, make sure. Because, listen, the pandemic came and a lot of you wasn't ready. You wasn't ready. You were swimming naked. A lot of folks were swimming naked. You got to do it. So take between 10 and 20%. If you can do 20, you're doing real good. But if you can't afford to 20, to get 10, between 10 and 15% and pull that out of every paycheck, every time somebody gave you a gift, if you found $5 on the ground, wherever your money sources are coming from, you make sure you, pay, you give it to yourself. You got to do it. Even God understood that when it came to the tithing system of the Old Testament. There was a, a tithe called the festival tithe. And guess who that tithe went to? Even God understand the concept of paying yourself first. He said, you take this because it was food. I'm going to show you where to go and you get your, your, your crop, a 10% of your crop, and you go to a place and you have a celebration. And he said, you eat it. <laughs> Don't give it to the Levite. Don't give it to the priest. Don't give it to the stranger. Don't give it to the widow. This is for you. So God understand that concept. So when you pay yourself first, you pay in God. Do you understand? Because he cares about your well-being and where God is. When you walk up that morning and rolled over, God was right there in your house, your apartment, wherever you live. That's God's house. You dedicated it back to God. So now pay God his money. And how do you pay God his money? Pay your light bill, your gas, pay your water bill, pay your rent, pay and pay your mortgage and pay it on time. And you are paying God because then you are becoming a good steward. So then you got to go to the parable of the unjust ruler who was getting ready to fire a man because he was he was doing some stuff. And then and then the guy knew he was going to be fired. He went out there and made he, he willed and dealed with the clients of the the ruler. He willed and dealed, cut deals. And the ruler found out he was doing that and said, man, you are shrewd, my man. <laughs> and Jesus made the analogy of this natural thing that you're doing, the will and deal, it's going to be a heavenly return because of it. They're going to welcome you into heavenly things. It's a difficult parable uh, to interpret for some of you, but you're just going to have to go with it. You got to go with it. You got to go with it. So I will and deal with the world all the time, all the time. I show my face. I'm, I don't, I don't like, uh, I don't like um, drive-throughs. I don't like drive-throughs. And I thought I was the only one that didn't like drive-throughs. I just don't like them. Um, my father hates them, and I think that's where I got it from. Then I heard Bishop Moody, God rest his soul, say he don't like drive-throughs. But the reason why he don't like drive-throughs is different from me. Danny Bishop Moody said he didn't like drive throughs because when he was a little boy down there in Florida, when black people went to the restaurants, they couldn't go inside because of Jim Crow. So they would have to go on the side of the building and somebody would take a greasy bag, pass it out the window. And he said, when I, if I'm forced to go to a drive-thru, I see that same greasy bag coming out the window. He said, it reminded me of Jim Crow. <laughs> I don't like going through. I don't like it. I like going inside. And I want somebody to see my face. I'm going to get to that Chris Bacon in one second. I want somebody to see my face. If I shake their hand, that'd be great too. I want to talk to you, smile at you. You smile back at me. I like going inside the bank. Although we, I'm, I'm sometimes, I'm, most times I'm, I'm, I ain't got time, but I go to the ATM. But I physically like to go inside the bank and I want you to see me. I want you to see that I'm your customer because I may have to come in here to borrow some money and I want you to see me. You see, 
most of these great deals, when somebody say yes, it's because of they see you. They may not know you personally, but they know your personality. Do you understand? And they see you all the time. And, and so when you ask for the deal, they say, yeah, there's some, we see him coming all the time. He's trustworthy. They're going to say yes to me, but they don't, they're going to say no to you because they don't know you. They don't know you. So this is how I was able to get the things that I needed because I showed myself available. I physically, I want to see you. Even when it came time for me to buy a new phone and get a new Wi-Fi system, what I could have did all that over the phone and had it shipped to me. Nope. You know what I did? I got my little tall, dark, and handsome, that's questionable, in the car, and I drove up to the Verizon Wireless store. I drove over, I drove over to the Xfinity store. I want y'all to see me. <laughs> I want to shake your hand. That's the old school me. It's just the way I am. I want to be personable. That's how great deals are made. <laughs> and I've cut many deals. You understand? I see Chris Baker. So you got to pay yourself first. You got to do it. So you can have a nest egg. So just in case something break in the house, car break or your heart break, <laughs> you got something. Another pandemic is coming. You got something. And they say you got to have at least three, four to six months of uh, your income saved. So if you make if you make three thousand dollars a month. Then you need to be you need to have three, six, nine thousand dollars in savings just in case you out of work for three months. You can pay all your bills on time because you may be able to recover a new job in three months. Yes, you wiped out your emergency fund, but you at least had one, right? Then you get a new job and you start over. Keep putting that. You're always going to be putting that money away. Lord, let's see. Uh, where's Chris? If I'm attending a church that I've been tithing at, what am I supposed to do if I stop tithing? Am I to just give an offering that I'm comfortable with? All right. <clears throat> Let me read this again. What am I supposed to do? Oh, if I stop tithing. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now, my question to you would be, why did you stop tithing? Okay. Did you stop tithing because you came into the knowledge of the truth that you don't have to do that because you felt that you're going to be cursed and that God needed his money. Did you do that so that you can uh, be more frugal and save money? And so that you can put some of that money towards your own personal savings. All right. These questions are important because why did you even do it? So as I'm waiting <laughs> on your answer, you never needed to do it, but now that you realize you didn't need to do it and then you pulled back and decided not to give a tithe, the church, because they have set up the system, that system has been a failure from the very beginning of its institution. I'm talking when you made it money. I'm not talking about Old Testament. I'm talking when you made it money, the system was a failure. Day one, because what did it do? It manipulated people. So now the system is in, it's in granted in the people's mind. Uh, somebody sent me, somebody sent me a, a, a tithe video. Gosh, who was it? Where a guy was talking, a preacher was talking. It was like a TikTok video. Oh, man, who was that? This would be the perfect time to play that video. Who was it? Dana King. Dana King. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let me show y'all. 
this video and I'm going to see if I can do this on the fly. And I'm only going to show you this video because I want y'all to, to, you won't, may not be able to see the comments. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm going to download this video right, right quick. Y'all stay with me because this is perfect. And I'm, I, I'm uh, hoping that it, I won't get it snatched. But I, I got to find a way to put it on the screen. All right, because I need y'all to see it. Uh, where can I place it? Oh, I think I, I think I have a way to doing it. I think I got a way to do it. Hold on. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay. All right. Now it's it's downloading. Okay. I want y'all to see this. All right. I'm gonna put it over here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put it over here in this commercial. Uh, okay, I found it. All right, here we go. Watch this. I have never preached tithing in my life. I preach giving. Because in the New Testament, we're to give out of gratitude. And the Lord doesn't want you to give if you don't want to give it. But in the Old Testament, they had to tithe. It's not a Christian practice, but it was a Jewish practice. And my wife and I sat and listened to a young man in a church preaching on tithing. And he said to the congregation, if you don't tithe, your grandchildren and great-grandchildren will suffer because the law says to the third and fourth generation. He said, you'll be under the curse and you'll put your grandchildren under a curse. Do you want to do that? Then let's take up the offering for this morning. And they got the biggest offering I think they had for years. But I said afterwards to the leaders of that church, that was wicked teaching. And it makes people give out of fear, but the Lord loves a cheerful giver under the new covenant. And frankly, churches that are taught giving give far more than tithing. For some people, tithing would be far too little. And for others, it would be far too much. And we need to be much more flexible. For some people, it's far too little. And for others, it's far too much. Did you hear that? Brother Chris, that's why I felt this was perfect time. I don't know the title of this. It's Free Cross, Free Cross TV, Free Cross TV, one word. Um, and when you go into the comment section on there, the first person said, I've never been more financially blessed than when I was tithing regularly and giving cheerfully in abundance by faith. Then they said, am I rich? No. Am I blessed? Surely. Daily. And from that comment on, you started to see all these people chime in. And most of them are saying, amen, amen, amen. You're right because the tithing business, oh, no, 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 no. Here's the thing. Am I rich? The person said, no. The problem is you should be. <laughs> The problem is that you should be. If you're not, something's wrong with the system. Something's wrong with the system. You know why I say something's wrong with the system? It's because how it's been taught. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, have no room to receive. That means you're rich. You're rich. And I never, ever to this day, never, ever met anybody who ever called the bank or the bank called them and says, you need to find another bank because there is no more room in this bank for your money. <laughs> no more room. We were taught that you have no room to receive. What do they mean by that? Can y'all tell me? This is an important question to ask. The next person will get up and try to, to do a tithe thing. You will have no more room to receive. What do that mean? 
that scripture alone and quoting that citation alone tells us that monetary tithing is unlawful. It's unlawful. Why? Because if we were talking about food, then you can run out of room in your refrigerator because that was the storehouse. It was a room. <laughs> and you can only put so much food in there that now you've been packing so much power and so much food in there. God says, don't rob me. Come on, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. And he says, if you do this, you will have no more room to receive all that food. <laughs> Why ain't nobody in that analyzing that? <laughs> huh? So you change it to money, and money is digital now. So you can, you can, you're going to give until you die, and you'll never, never fill it up. Ever. It's, 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 it's unlawful to manipulate Scripture like that. It's unlawful. So let me go to, back to Chris. He's giving me answers here. <clears throat> I haven't stopped yet, but I've really been pressed upon uh, my heart to stop. Oh, it's been pressed upon my heart to stop since coming into knowledge of the truth. I, I want to make sure I'm ready to be uh, ready for the backlash of why I'm not paying tithes anymore. Some don't receive revelation, especially if you're not in a relationship role. Amen. If I'm attending a church that I've been. OK, I read that one. Uh, but y'all have to understand I'm uh, still attending service with brothers and sisters who still think you're not been filled with the Holy Spirit until you have spoken in tongues. Yeah. So the knowledge of not tithing is really going to go over their heads. True. Hey, Chris, I got, I got a surprise for you. I go to that same church. <laughs> Chris, you and me go to the same church. We brothers in the gospel, we go to the same church. So how do I handle it? I don't. I don't worry about tithing. When I hear it over the pulpit, I go la, 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 la. All while they, they collecting tithes. La, 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 la. I have my own little worship going on in my head. La 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 la. Do you know the way to San Jose? La 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 la. That's the song I'll be singing in my head. Why they why they holding their offerings? Well, not often. I do I do often. I like offering, but that tithe thing. It's so now we're gonna collect our tithe. All you tithe payers, stand up, stand stand in the line. <laughs> Turn to Malachi and right away. Do you know the way to San Jose? La 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 la. <laughs> Darlene, la 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 la. <laughs> See, you know the tune. <laughs> oh yeah, I just I just be singing it away, and then when they finally done, I'm like, okay, what I miss? What I miss? Ah, bah, 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 bah. Oh, never mind. Do you know the way to San Jose? La 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 la. Then they say, you speaking in tongues? No. I'm la, 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 la. <laughs> That's my Dion. That's my Dion tongues. <laughs> oh, man. Let me stop laughing before somebody rebuke me for laughing on my show. Shame on you. L laughing on your show. <laughs> you're not supposed to be laughing while you're teaching the word of God. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> All right. Uh oh, baby girl must be home because I am burning up. <laughs> baby girl was gone. And uh, uh, she home now because it got 98 degrees up down here. Today's temperature was about 50. It felt like it was 60 degrees outside today. Oh, it's going to be 60 tomorrow, though. Chicago, y'all, 60 degrees tomorrow. Woo-wee, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is good. The Lord, see, look at that. 
that, that say six old, six old dog, six old. Everybody gonna be outside. And white folk gonna have on sandals and shorts and no shirt. <laughs> I'm telling you, and I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go live tomorrow. I'm gonna take a picture. <laughs> They ain't gonna have no clothes on tomorrow. Watch, and they won't get. They won't. They they won't catch the pneumonia. They're not gonna. We will though. All right, the clock keeper is uh, cussing, y'all. I, I turned and read the scriptures on giving in the New Testament. I purposed in my heart days before I attended. All right, lovely, lovely, lovely. I am not rich enough to give in all these offerings that. <laughs> Uh, my pastor at the church I attend just stopped asking people to give. Wow. When he did that, they received more money in a year. Yeah. Wow. See, I keep telling the, the preachers, if you tell the people the truth, they will give more. How many of y'all heard me say that? Hmm? Raise your hands, raise your hand if you're sure. See, I could do that because I always put day order, day order, and I, I, I like a what's my deodorant? Degree, gotta have degree. I can't wear nobody. I can't wear nobody else's deodorant. Degree. <laughs> George Monden, when y'all see my hair butter and whipped, that's the man. He's the culprit. Yeah. Raise your hand. <laughs> see what I tell you. <laughs> What was the question? I done forgot the question. Can somebody tell me what the question was? <laughs> I done forgot the question. The clock keeper threw me off. It's 30 degrees in, in New York. <laughs> Chris Baker, what was the question? I forgot the question I asked. Monkey said, uh, he said, degree sport. Yeah, that, I'm telling you, man, whoever made that degree must have been a degreed person. Cause that thing right there is a blessing. I can't put the, I can't put the roll on on. I can't put the spray on. I can't put on Irish Spring. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can't wear nothing else. I can't wear nothing else. Oh, 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 Johanna. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. You was talking about giving. You, you rolled your hand. <laughs> yeah, it must. It must be time for me to move on. I told y'all, if you tell the people the truth, they will give more. It never fails. Don't lie to them. Tell them, we got a hole in the, in the, in the wall. Dear Liza, there's a hole. A pastor told us it was his anniversary. He wanted single people to give how much? $1,000 and married people to give 1500 I didn't, but others did. When I voiced my concerns with the member, she said it wasn't much. <laughs> Okay, clock keeper, okay. Tell the people the truth. They will give. Now, as I close, I got to drop this on Patreon. Um, churches, listen. I went away. And I'm back. Uh, churches, listen. <clears throat> the concept of paying yourself apply to you, too. The members are paying themselves first, and when they do that, they can then take care of the needs of the church until in case an emergency happens, the people can afford to take care of the needs of the church. They sure can. Since they go there, they might as well just take care of each other. You, the church, should be putting monies away. When monies is collected at your Pihokee Missionary Baptist Church of God in Christ, uh, Pentecostal, then if the if the offerings uh, uh, if it's if you've raised six thousand dollars you know in the offering then you take ten or twenty percent of that money and you put it away into an an, uh, an emergency fund. If you're not doing that, then you your church as a whole are not good stewards of your money. This is the reason why y'all often raise two and three offerings because you didn't do that. Then you say we can't afford to do that. Downsize. You need to downsize. Spending all that money on nothing, Danny says. Downsize. You want us to downsize so we can pay you tithes and offerings? You need to downsize. First of all, you didn't need that big building. You didn't need it, but you got it now. So, uh, cut some salaries. The world does it. How many layoffs we heard over the past few weeks? 
and cut some salaries. Or lower their I know I know I was working for a church where they just couldn't afford me, so instead of instead of them giving me the full amount they gave me, I said, just give me half the amount. Just give me half. If you're paying me six hundred dollars, give me three hundred so that you all can take that three hundred and put it towards this these bills so that you can get out of this debt, and then you can go back to paying me my six hundred dollars. Did it work? Absolutely it did. I'm in here with y'all. I'm not here to rob y'all. I'm here for you. That's why my Patreon is $12. It's still $12, and I got over 1,000 people over there. Now, all 1,000, that would be nice if all 1,000 uh, would be paying the $12. That would be a blessing. I'd, ooh, the Lord, I'd, I'd, they can pay for my doctorate degree by the time I get through. That would be great. But it's $12. And I give, I give at least $30 a month of, uh, or more of information over there. I know I do. I know I do. But it's twelve dollars. And some people complain about the twelve dollars. <laughs> I can't I just can't do it. I can't do it. I, I just I just don't see myself giving twelve dollars. <laughs> and then I ask them about their uh, their Netflix account. <laughs> hey y'all, how much is Netflix? <laughs> how much is Netflix? Y'all, y'all gonna pay for entertainment. You will downsize something that you need but you will never downsize something that you want remember that you heard it over here people will always get rid of the things that they need but they will always pile up the things that they want that they want this is why their lights get shut off <laughs> because they didn't want to pay it until the moratorium was over meanwhile they were standing when the, the new iPhone dropped they got it. The new Android drop, they got it. The new dress, <laughs> the new dress, they got it. They got all the new, the new everything. They got it. They got it. Hair, they wanted, they wanted to look like Betty Davis. They went down there and <laughs> paid a thousand bucks. They got it. They got it. And they said, they, then they went over to the Patreon. I'm not gonna give. I'm gonna take this twelve dollars. He is so he is a great teacher. He giving me the word so I can live on and teach my children. But I, I can't afford that right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this twelve dollars and give this over. Give it to my hairdresser because <laughs> my hairdresser because I want to look good when I go to church. And I know that people don't like me. I know I know that the first lady can't stand my guts. But man, I'm gonna show my butt is gonna be whipped. <laughs> My butt is going to be whipped. I got to put that $12 to Netflix. Netflix is eleven ninety nine dollars a month. <laughs> I charge one penny more than Netflix. <laughs> one penny more. Shirley, you paying $24 for Netflix? I know you're not. I know you're not. Unless you got to add on, add on. Hey, brother, could you... Uh, well <laughs> hey, y'all, the Smart Christian Channel... You know, you know what I do not like about him? I'm I'm going to tell y'all what I can't stand about Corey. I'm going to his channel right now. I'm <laughs> How you smell smart Christian channel. I can't stand him. <laughs> All right. Let me show you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you what I can't stand about him. <laughs> Corey is a fraud. He's a fraud. You know why? He'll play that music. He'll play that music. And then when he ain't got time, he'll play Five seconds. If God is all knowing and all wise, why in the world would wait, He create wait. Satan, knowing wait, wait, what wait. Satan is going to do? Wait, where's my Where's my uh, my audio? That I can easily reasonably. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. Let me see. Oh, he ain't, he ain't play his he ain't play his intro on this one. He got an intro that he played five seconds. I'm, I'm like, God. what a waste of content. God is all knowing and all wise. <laughs> That's a waste, man. That's a waste. Just a waste of content. Six days ago. How are spiritual gifts given? How are they? But 
See, he ain't see he ain't doing them on these. He ain't doing them on these. He ain't doing them on these. He's in, he's inconsistent. <laughs> he's inconsistent. Let me see. What what's 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 some other mess and he this is other mess. He's inconsistent. Give that man some pasta. Paul says that whatever give that man some peas. He's it, let y'all fill in the other peas. It's as though there's a <laughs> let your still He ain't doing it. He ain't doing it. His intro is pom pom. <laughs> <laughs> he's inconsistent. He's a fraud. Y- y- y'all need to delete. <laughs> Wait, here, here's one. Every color. This is the one. This is the one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The person has to do nowadays is hold on. shortcuts. So what you got. Don't be silly with the next one. Right there. Uh, he not doing it. Corey, I'm wasting my time trying to end the show, and you're not, you're not even all doing right. it. So all a person has to do nowadays <laughs> is just make it up. All right, y'all. Let me get out of here. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Wait, here it is. Nowadays, it is. it's just make it up and people will believe it. People just want to have their deal. People want to be People want to take little shortcuts in. <laughs> he, he said, I keep it guessing. Corey, what kind of intro is that, man? Huh? You All that production energy you got, you got lower thirds, you plead the fifth. <laughs> you know the 13th Amendment. You speak it in Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic. And this all we get? All a person has to do nowadays is just make it up and people will believe it. People just want to <laughs> People just want to be comfortable. <laughs> He's a fraud, y'all. <laughs> He's, I'm all <laughs> He's a fraud. He's robbing y'all of, of all this beauty right here. You good. You good. You good. You good. He's robbing y'all of that. He's robbing y'all. And if I put both of those together, that's at least two minutes right there. He's a fraud. <laughs> He's a fraud. Somebody said Lee Corey alone. Well, I'm, I'm trying to protect y'all from somebody who give you all this great content. Just preach the unadulterated word of God, but he can't give you an intro. Do you know how much money and time and energy and, and blood, sweat, and tears I put on my intro? Huh? Huh? Only one person in American history has ever complained about my intro being too long. One person out of thousands, thousands, thousands. <laughs> He's a fraud. <laughs> He's a fraud. And all of the people who come over here from from uh, the Corey Miner show, thank y'all. Never return to his show. Never until he fixed that mess. Let me get out of here, y'all. I gotta go. Oh, let's drop. Uh, let's drop um, our. Um, what am I dropping? Let's drop um, Patreon. Uh, where is it? It's dropping, y'all. Bam, it has dropped. It's called the Upper Room Prophecy Typology. Y'all got some homework. Okay. Where my music at? Music ain't playing for some reason. I don't know. Corey, what you do to my stuff? Hmm? Corey, what you do? There it is. Must have been, it must have, must have been, it must have been on uh must have been on uh Corey, Corey reached through the screen. He, was, he, he reached through the screen and he, he pressed the mute button on my thing. He went. <laughs> All right, did it drop, y'all? Did it drop? Did it drop? Go to patreon.com. Y'all got some homework tonight. Thank y'all for. Um, <laughs> Desmond said, Corey jinxed you. Thank y'all for doing your homework. I appreciate it. Y'all been doing a wonderful job doing it too, man. Some good. Some of y'all are brilliant, and you don't even know it. Today might be a little more harder, though. We're talking about typology. It's already there on the wall. Go over there and study, study, study. Come back tomorrow on Patreon. We're going to talk about this. Paying yourself first. Let's talk about 401ks and maybe Roth IRAs, and um, let's talk about um, I don't know all kind of stuff this week. Bitcoin and. Your coin and my coin and everybody got a coin. You get a coin, he get a coin, I get a coin. 
Take care of yourself and one another. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Well, good, goodbye. 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 Enjoy yourself. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today.